in a dark world filled with deceit. One united voice is crying out. Revealing the truth of God's word. It's time to expose the hidden truth. And unravel the lies. While we're living in Satan's little season. With Sister Crystal and Brother Phil. Welcome to Living in Satan's Little Season show. We're your hosts, Brother Phil, Sister Crystal. Hey, hey. All right, we got a special one for you. We're going to talk about death today, or shall I say death misunderstood. Well, the idea behind this show is that there's a lot of misunderstanding about death, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I think come across the last few years, or at least for quite a long time now, that death it seems to be an option that some people choose because life is too hard. And they choose it because I think their misconception of death is that it's the easy way out. But death is never an easy way out because it is our enemy. The last show we went on is this topic of hell. Obviously the hell deception that we that we discussed earlier. This kind of goes along with that because in Revelation 20, verse 13 and 14, we're going to read that real quick. This explains a little bit about death. And so we want to read this first because I think we need some clarification on this idea when it comes to what we call hell mm. and it has to do with death. Why don't you go ahead and read Revelation chapter 20, verse 13 and 14 there. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them, and they were judged, and each one according to his works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. So here you have the sea that gave up the dead that were in. This is, of course, after on the great white throne judgment. Okay, this is context here, okay? Mm -hmm. You have this idea that death and Hades, see, this is why I say death is a place. Mm -hmm. Or I should say like a state of being. Because it says, and death and Hades delivered up the dead that were in them. Mm. Okay, so it's a essentially death is a place. Like a holding cell. Yes, it's like, so this is why I stated earlier in a show that death is the side of the Hades that is a separation from the good. When the rich man and Lazarus story... In, chap in Luke chapter 17, the rich man went to the side of Hades called death. Lazarus went to the side of Hades, which was called Abraham's bosom or Hades or whatever else. Went. It's a good side. Mm -hmm. So there's two sides. But you see, at the great white throne judgment here, it's explaining that death and Hades both delivered up the dead that were in them. And they all, everybody at that point were judged. This is the great white throne judgment. That's why it's called that. Now, after that, the next verse, Revelation chapter 20, verse 14, then death and Hades were then cast into the lake of fire. Mm. And the lake of fire is the second death. So now you have death, the first death, and Hades combined get thrown into this lake of fire, which is the second death, which is kind of interesting. We're going to define what that word means, death. Because a lot of people think that word, well, how would you say that most people define that word, that word death? What would you say most people, if you, like, you go on the street and you pulled a bunch of people, what do you think most people would say death would be? The end. They, they would like, say, what, like, cease to exist? The point where you stop being. You would think that's kind of, because kind of our basic understanding of things, that, you know, hey, when you die, that's, it's the end. That's, that's all Nowhere else to. to go. But that's not the biblical definition. We want <laughs> We want to find the biblical definition of death. Well, that's like, okay, so when you're driving in a neighborhood, and I was doing that today, and you come to a sign that says, 
dead end. Mm -hmm. means that road leads nowhere. People think in their mindset, when you die, you, you are, you're at the yeah, end. you're at the end of everything. You don't yeah. go anywhere but yeah. there. I would say that's probably what most people would think. Because mm -hmm. that's kind of the way our understanding of things are. Because most people don't think on a spiritual level. But what we're going to do is we're going to prove to you biblically. <laughs> that I love to prove things biblically because I'm going to show you how this word death does not mean what we think it means. Is that like your ace in the hole? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Forget so, it, forget about cards. He just lays the Bible on the table and says, I'm proving this legitimately. So what we're going to do <laughs> is we're going all the way back to the first place in the whole Bible that this word is mentioned. Come on now. Yep. And that's in Genesis chapter 2. That's, I mean, that's at the very beginning. Because God warns Adam in the Garden of Eden about this idea of death. And, of course, I'm going to be reading out of my uh, Septuagint version because I don't trust these other versions. Um, not that I don't trust them, but I want to get an accurate understanding of what this word is, what it, what it means. God is giving Eve, Adam a warning. And the Lord God gave these instructions to Adam. You may eat from all the trees of paradise, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For... On whatever day you eat from it, your life will end and you'll die. Okay, the way they describe it is there's actually a couple words here. That it's, it's interesting that they use. Another way of just saying it is it says, On the day you'll, you eat of it, to death you shall die. That's essentially what he says. To death you will die. God was giving him a warning here, which I think is kind of interesting because it's like to death... You will die. In other words, he uses two different words for death uh -huh. there, which is kind of interesting because you're like, why would they use two different words for death there in that verse of scripture? That, this is what we're getting to here. We're trying to understand what this word means. Because remember, he said the day you eat of that fruit, to death you will die. Did they, when they ate, when they did eat the fruit, which he did, did they actually die that day? No. How do you explain that? See, this is why we were trying to get, because see, people's definition of what death means is not the same as what the biblical definition. And we're going to go over that right now. My understanding of death, and I'm going to show you what what it is. Death, essentially, in, in, a, in a single word in English. I, I looked to try to find every single word in English I could possibly think of that would describe this. Separation. What death means, because we know that, you know, according to a lot of the stories of the Bible, when people, when death came upon them, they did not cease to exist. Story of rich man Lazarus is an example of that. When they when they died, they didn't cease to exist. They went into Hades. But what the way God is describing death here, it's a separation. So what God was telling to tell Adam is the day you eat of it, you're going to separate and you're going to start dying. You're going to start basically aging and dying now. Decaying. Yeah, decaying. So it's two processes. Essentially, he told him two things that you're going to, you're going, death was going to be going to come upon you. In other words, separation was going to come upon you. You're going to separate. You and me are going to be separate. Mm. We're, it's almost like when a husband and wife, they, before a divorce, they have a separation. This is kind of what that this is, is describing. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you say that? This is what happened On, at the Garden of Eden. What happened after they sinned, Adam and Eve did. They had to had to separate themselves from the garden at that point. right, and from and that was from God as well. Their connection and their mm -hmm. fellowship with God separated mm -hmm. because they said, "The day you eat of it, you'll surely die." So they did that day. They the, uh, death came upon them because they separated from God and their fellowship they had because that was a choice. Right, they chose. They ultimately were all given that choice. If we want to be separated from God. What we're trying to get is this understanding of what this word means. Because we know it didn't mean that their life was going to cease to exist that day. Because later on, in Genesis chapter 3, we, we discover that the curse God gives Adam. Mm -hmm. And you can read that curse right there. Go ahead and read uh, Genesis 3 verse 17 uh, at the end of that there. Cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it. All the days of your life. Uh, didn't he mean all the day of your life? Because he said the day you eat of it. I mean, see, he he was there even giving a curse and said curse is a ground for you because of this. But all of the days. So wait a minute. I thought he said the day you eat of it. You'll. Sh this is why we need to understand 
death doesn't mean what we think it means. It's separation from God. So, in other words, when you go back to Revelation, when death and Hades with cast, see, essentially, it was thrown into the lake of fire, and the second death showed up. See, what death is, is a separation mm -hmm. scenario. What happens at the resurrection? Remember, everyone's going to get resurrected. We had, a, we had a show on that. Right. Both the righteous and the wicked are going to get resurrected. There's a separation between the two. The righteous people will get an inheritance in New Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Those people are that are separated, they go to the second death, which is separated from God's spirit in the New Jerusalem. Interestingly enough, the actual original word for, mm -hmm. and this is really interesting mm -hmm. for all you, um, you know, movie buffs out there. Okay, <laughs> the word that is called death in the Bible mm -hmm. in the Greek. What is it, honey? Thanatos. Okay. Anybody who's watched any of the Marvel movies knows knows where they got that <laughs> word from, right? Thanos, Thanatos. Of course, Thanos in the you know in the Marvel movies, of right. course, he was the one that was wanting to put to death half the population of everybody. Right. That was his whole goal. Exactly. We all saw Endgame and all these other movies out there. <laughs> he was the essentially the bad guy in on the on the on the right. movie, right? And what was it? they called him Thanos, which is kind of really similar to. Thanatos, which is actually the word for death in the Bible. Mm. The biblical word for death. So they were describing what something was without us knowing they were describing it. <laughs> so, you know, even these um, Hollywood gets it right sometimes, explaining all this stuff. I'm sure they did their research and they, oh, yeah. we'll call him Thanos because it's cool and it means death and that's what he wants to do. He wants to kill after, war, after the universal exactly. population. Mm. So that's what it is. And so if in all these Greek words have a lot of similarities in what in the English. And symbolization. Yeah. There's yeah. a whole lot of symbolization, um, symbolicness to it, which is really interesting because going back to the hard times people have endured throughout their lives and the situations, if anyone knows of loved ones or people you've known who have chosen death or suicide over living, it's because I believe there's this lie that the devil evokes over people that death is better because he did the same thing to Adam and Eve in the Bible. Surely you will not die. The idea is that he doesn't want us to think that death is of what existence that it is, is that it's a separation, but that it's that lie that it's just the end. And if you die without having a relationship with Jesus and God, then you will have to be separated again. And so suicide isn't necessarily the easy way out. And we've probably known lots of people who've had that, they made that final decision to choose death over life, but it's never the right choice to make because there's always that separation if that person isn't living rightly, which is sad because that's really, the devil is so good at lying and deceiving to so many people and in their weakest moments that they choose the lie over the truth. It's like I say, it's separation. Initially, of course, if you're a righteous person, it's separation from your body and your spirit separate from one another. And that's what death is. We understand that. Now, if you're a wicked or you're not righteous, you're not living according to God's will. It's also includes this separation from God. And so this is why we're going to go to first Corinthians. And that's of course the resurrection chapter. <laughs> and we're going to read a few verses in here that discuss this idea of death. But we're going to read a few verses before 1 Corinthians 15, verse 23. Go ahead and read, okay. read, start right there. We'll, we'll discuss a couple of these. But each one in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, afterward those who are Christ at his coming. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, when he puts an end to all rule and to all authority and power. Okay, we'll stop there for a second because here he's going by a pecking order of how the resurrection is going to go. First, it's Christ, Christ's resurrection. That, was, that already happened, you know, 33 AD, right in, right in that area. He was called the first fruit. Then after that, those are Christ at his coming. That's why he said the first resurrected. Okay, this is, okay, again, talking about the holy ones. That's these guys, the ones who are Christ at his coming. This isn't all the righteous dead in all history and all that. No, this is just who are Christ. See, I noticed that they're really specific about that. That's why I said that the people in the first resurrection are not just every righteous person on earth 
are going to get resurrected. No, it was only those who are Christ mm -hmm. at his coming. Mm -hmm. So it's the people who are who are, are believers in Jesus Christ during that first century, those were the first resurrected. And they're mm -hmm. still around today. That's the first resurrection right there. And then, of course, we know, we know Revelation chapter 20 talks about these are the first resurrection. But then, of course, I'm glad it keeps going because it then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom of God, the Father, and puts an end to all rule and all authority and all power. Mm -hmm. Well, we're not there yet. But we're approaching that time mm -hmm. coming the end. Okay, see, so there's another area. That this is the final resurrection. Mm -hmm. And so we're approaching that now. So you see, we're on the third area. We're not Christ the first fruit. We're not Christ at his coming because we missed all that. Oh, we didn't miss it. It wasn't really for us. Mm -hmm. But we're on the last part where he puts all rule and authority and power under his own feet. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. Okay, so there you go. We, we talk, he, There's so many different ways he says this. Remember, he talks about the parable of the one deceived sheep. We, mm -hmm. we talked about that in one of the shows. Mm -hmm. Essentially, this is what he's talking about. All 100% of his enemies mm. are going to be under his end. He's going to reign. That's why he's still reigning now. He resurrected. He came back already. And he's reigning now. Yeah, I know most people, I, I know... They're, they're in rebellion against his reigning. That doesn't change the fact that he's reigning right now. He right. has all rule and all authority and all power, and he is reigning right now. Most people are in rebellion against his reign. That he must reign until. There's, there, 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 he's going to stop reigning eventually. Is that you know, the caveat? Or, well, yeah. Is until? Until. See, if you look at very carefully at this thing, he must reign until, until he has put all enemies mm. under his feet. So every 100% of people... And that's, of course, there's other scriptures that say every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. This is all has to do with that. That's why I'm saying every single person eventually will be unified and believe in Christ and submit to his authority and his power. Amen. And that's what we want. I'm trying to convince people to do it while they're still alive now, as opposed to regretting it later on. And wishing that they cut off an arm and <laughs> right. out, plucked out an eye, like like Christ was saying in the Sermon on the Mount. Because this is why what we need to do, because otherwise it's separation. Now, the next verse has mm -hmm. this idea of death, mm -hmm. or thanatos, like we talked about earlier. Okay, <laughs> go ahead and read the last verse here we're going to go into. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. Death, as I described, is separation. Death means separation. Separation from God, separation from all enemies will be under his feet. By understanding all that, no one will be separated now. By having every enemy under his feet, everyone will be unified. So there'll be absolutely no separation. Mm -hmm. Which it, which is describes exactly what he says with the, uh, uh, he'll go after all of the, to the last, last deceived sheep. He's going to go after that deceived sheep. So here it's describing Christ going after everyone and the last enemy that will be destroyed. See, most people think death means people who have died. No, it means the last enemy that will be destroyed is separation or death. So that we all will be unified. We won't be separated at all. Because if death is destroyed and we're not separated from God, then we all coexist with God, like you said, in unification. It's all 100% unified. Everyone in the world will be unified. This is God. Well, this was God's plan all along. The more I understand his plan, the more it just, it, it's a brilliant pr plan. <laughs> that What he does is he just sends Satan down here to, to, to get everybody taking sides, fighting with each other. And everything, and then the, the, of course, some people can see through all that, like us. We're, we're, we're seeing through all, all the nonsense, right? And those people, of course, will be have great rewards, all of us. And then eventually, more and more people will come to their senses and realize oh, this doesn't work. Who knows? Maybe trillion, quadrillion years ago, this happened with God Himself, <laughs> and He figured out the only thing that really works is righteousness all the time. Maybe, I don't know. I'm just spitfiring here because this is what he figured out. People will figure it out eventually. Anything else doesn't work. Rebellion never works out. Only love and being unified together is the only thing that works. You know, this is where we're at now. That's why I'm saying the end will come and ever, all enemies will be put under his feet and the last enemy to be destroyed or taken out is death, which is separation. There'll be no more separation. 
right. will all be 100% unified. And that's really what we're, what we're going for here. Mm. This is what death means. What's the second death? Okay, that's the second separation. This is why in Revelation chapter 20, death and Hades will be thrown into the lake of fire, which the lake of fire essentially is the second separation. Those are going to be the people outside of New Jerusalem because they're not in unified with the brethren mm -hmm. in New Jerusalem. They are cast out of mm -hmm. the city, separated from God, separated from love and all that. And that's the reason why, you know, there'll be an outer darkness. Well, there'll be weeping mm -hmm. and gnashing of teeth. I'm trying to explain all this to you because you need to understand that's what th is going to happen with these people. Well, you know, that description does sound like a separation. It is. Mm -hmm. And that's a terrible thing. People don't understand. Everything I see Satan doing is separating. Mm -hmm. He's Dividing. separating. Yeah, he loves to divide. He That's all he does. Well, that's what that whole idea is. He divides and conquers. God is trying to unify. Mm -hmm. Satan is a divider. Amen. That's why don't go along with his plan for, to divorce your spouse. All the dividing that is all satanic. And this is what Satan tries to want everyone to do. They'll divide. And this is the reason why even for families to get to, uh, they're trying to divide families up. Yeah. You know, hey, everybody goes on their own way when they get, mm -hmm. when they get old enough. Why? Why divide? Because this is what Satan's telling you to do. Yes. It's all his plan. You divide up. Because see, if you divide up, you're not unified. Anymore. When well, you're much stronger, if you're together, than if you're unified. Well, we've talked about that. When families do break off and the husbands, or young young sons and daughters get married and they get husbands and wives and whatnot and they cleave to their spouses and they have their own households and we've been taught in our society that that's all good and it's easier for the devil to pick you off when you're not united with your family but in the old testament jacob and all of his children lived in proximity to each other which made it easy for the family to stay united. Yeah, and they all went to Egypt together, all 75 of them. <laughs> I mean, that's what happened. You know, and you <laughs> look at that and you're like, that looks like, oh, so foreign today. Why would they? Because they were unified. Right. That was not, that. see, division is a curse. The Bible right. even taught, I, I, yes. I'm, I'm going to do a show on this eventually. <laughs> because what, what Satan has talked everybody in, this is part of Satan's little season plan. Yes. I know it is is to divide everyone up, divide homes up, divide, oh, you got to go your own way, and then everyone's alone. It's like, no, it's being unified and together is a godly trait. Yes. Being separated is is death and it's an enemy. Yes. It's satanic. We don't want that. We want to, so we need to be thinking unification mm. as opposed to dividing, mm -hmm. separating Separation from God. All, that's what death Essentially, if you're a wicked person, it's not just separation from your body, because essentially that's what death is. It's your your spirit separating from your body. Mm -hmm. But more than that, it's a separation from God. Mm -hmm. That's what the second death is. Mm -hmm. It's you're separating from God as well, right. and you're outside of the New Jerusalem, and you'll be wishing you were in there. You'll be crying. You'll be angry, weeping, gnashing of teeth, and all that. Mm. This, this goes along with the hell one. That I would talk about the hell deception. I want you to understand this is what death is. Mm. Death is not your friend, it's no. an enemy, but see, people treat it as your friend. Mm -hmm. How many marriages have failed all the time because they, people don't want to unify? Mm -hmm. Instead, they separate. Separation is mm -hmm. not good. No. But all we're conditioned to do in our society and cultures now mm -hmm. is separation is a good mm -hmm. thing. That is a lie from the devil. And what we need to understand is we're wanting to get rid of the devil. Get rid of his ideas and his philosophies because they don't work. That's right. What works is God's philosophies and what he teaches in his word. And what he teaches in his word is unification and ultimately unification of all everyone. Because we'll all be unified one day. Mm -hmm. It's not a matter of if now, it's when. It's like, I want people to get on board now. <laughs> By the time we get to the next life, and most people will, uh, we know will have made the wrong choice. Not under the impression that, oh, we're going to have this mass awakening and a whole bunch of people are going to start coming to the Lord. 
is very doubtful because we know how the end of Revelation works. Most of the world is deceived by the devil. It's my goal to get people undeceived by the devil. I don't even know if undeceived is a word, but I, I say it's a word. Okay? We all know what that means. To get you out of the deception of the devil and into the unification and anti-separation of God. That's what we want to do. We want to be unified with the Lord. Right. And this is what we want. But see, it all starts with us. We have to be unified. We have to just mm. get out there and just unif unify everyone. That's why this divide and conquer scenario, that's why I don't vote. I don't get involved with politics. I don't do it. Because all that's de designed to divide everyone. I love everyone. I don't care if you're, what political party you're part of. I love every single person on earth. Mm. I wish that people wouldn't harm themselves, obviously. I right. wish people wouldn't make poor choices. I tell people what I think, what, what, mm. what I think the Bible teaches. Right. And the Bible teaches about all kinds of, of stuff that, you know, is really relevant to today. And I, I, so I just tell people, okay, this is what the Bible says. You can do what you want. I'm not your babysitter. I'm not your parent. I'm, I'm just out there telling you, telling what the gospel says, telling mm -hmm. what the message of the word says. Follow the spirit of God inside your life. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of an anarchist in that way. You know, <laughs> I consider myself a godly anarchist because I, that's, I think the way God does everything, mm -hmm. he just gives you the word and expects you to be an adult. Well, I think it's the idea is that he wants us to choose wisely. And that's really what you want young people to grow up and to make wise choices. And if you make a wise choice, then the inevitability is that you're going to have a reward waiting for you. But if you make a bad choice, then you're going to have to suffer the consequence. And that's another separation. Well, we know what Paul says. Remember, the wages of sin yes. is death. In other words, the wages of your sin is separation. Now I want you to think about that for a minute because if you use, put that word separation there instead of death, it whole makes a whole lot more sense. Right. In other words, your wages of your sin is you become separated mm. from unity, love, all that kind of stuff. Right. But the gift of God yes. is eternal life. We don't want separation. We want unification and eternal life. Mm -hmm. That's what we're going for here. People that don't choose life don't choose God. Don't choose righteousness. They're, 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 what they're choosing is separation. And, of course, we know what the end will be. Weeping and gnashing of teeth. I'm trying to spare you. I'm trying to spare everyone. Right. This. I don't want to see anyone weeping and angry and all that. All you have to do is just start living your life for Christ. Mm-hmm. Okay, one day at a time, start doing what Christ wants you to do. And that's it. I think that's a tough thing, is that we're trying to persuade everyone to see that what we've been taught and what we've been led to believe isn't exactly the truth. The truth is this. Death is a separation. What the devil is trying to do is to get as many people as he can to not choose God so that they are separated. We've yeah. talked about this before, that what God wants us to do is positive and beneficial and true and right, unif unifying. The devil is always opposite of God. And so it's separation, it's division, it's evil. And so he always wants to get people to go his way, which is inevitably against God and separated from God. We live in such a disconnected society mm -hmm. now. I mean, if you notice our whole culture and society is so disconnected mm -hmm. from one another, most people don't know who their neighbors are. Mm. It's it's like we there, there's no connection between people. Where most people are just on their phones all day. They don't even talk to each other anymore. Mm. Uh, what I'm saying is is this is not God's will. Of course, this is all satanic in nature. Right. We understand all that. But I just this is a I just want to get this message out to get a little bit give a little bit more explanation on this. Now I needed to explain death a little bit more because people not understanding. Yeah, you're not going to be in agony in a, a lake of fire where you're just, your just your flesh is like burning all the time. Mm -hmm. You're not going to, it's not going to pain and suffering in that way. It's more of you're going to be separated mm -hmm. from God's love. You're going to want that love because imagine not having anyone who ever cares for you because you know, if you don't, you're not following Christ. You're that's where you're at. You're, you're going to be separated. It's like an emptiness. You're not going to be filled with anything good or worthwhile. It's empty. And, no one likes to feel empty, and no one likes to be separated or alone. That's like torture. You know, I know some people go, oh, I, I, I'm all alone. I feel so good. I understand that sometimes people feel like they're inundated with people and maybe children or whatever, and you need a break. 
But this is the kind of loneliness that no one wants. It would be the equate to like being on a um, in a place like a deserted island. Yeah, completely alone, yeah. with no one and nothing there, and you're empty. And that's what we're trying to avoid because I think God's designed us. Yes, designed the human person to want to be connected with mm-hmm. each other. He, that's it's it's in our our DNA that God has designed us to be. <laughs> we're not designed to be individualists, so to speak. We're designed to be in groups. It's people that think that we're to be separated, they are. They, they must live in a fantasy land. And I'm trying to get people out of that to get back into being unified with each other and love each other. Death isn't what you're told. It's essentially separation. If you're among the wicked, it's separation from God, which you don't want to be. You want to be unified with him. And then, of course, your life is happy, joy, all that kind of good stuff. And that's what we want. Mm. We're living in Satan's little season. Not only because it's biblical. But because it just makes sense. Join or contact us at satanslowseason.org. This is a non copyright Living in Satan's Low Season production.